In this video, I'm gonna take this 12 pound 3D printed quadcopter and fly it through that. If this thing runs into this, it's probably gonna be a pretty bad day. Now to get started, I pulled out the quadcopter that I made and flew in the last video. This thing is giant, and even though the motors are made out of plastic, it actually flies pretty well. Looking at the comments section of the last video, literally half of them are all about adding FPV, which I think is a great idea. So let's do that. To get started, I took everything apart, which is luckily pretty easy. The arms just slide off, and then I can set them to the side so I can reuse them later. FPV stands for first person view, and it allows the pilot to see the same thing as the quadcopter would see, and it's what all the cool kids were doing like five years ago. To add this to the quad, we're gonna need to make a few new parts. The camera I'm using goes into this little 3D printed pod, which allows it to rotate and for the wires to pass through the back. I then printed out some parts for a housing, and everything gets assembled with heat stake inserts and screws. This is a really robust way of designing things and allows things to be assembled and disassembled very often. To design all these pieces, I have been using Onshape, which is great because it allows me to assemble things in CAD before ever printing. It also has tons of other features and it's entirely cloud-based, which has been really nice because you can use it or reference it anywhere you are. Now somehow I need to get the video from this camera to my FPV goggles, and that's where this comes in. This is what's called a VTX, and it's what broadcasts the video signal at up to one watt, which means you can still get good video signal even when you're pretty far away. These things also get really hot, so I added some heat sinks to help cool everything down. Now, since I'm changing some parts of the frame, I also need to reprint this giant centerpiece. This piece takes like an entire day to print, but once that was done, I could finally start assembling. This new design allows me to install two massive six cell batteries, which are really heavy, but it might help increase the flight time. The FPV module we made earlier then slides right between them, and once again, it assembles with heat stake inserts and screws. From here, all I had to do was reinstall the giant bundle of electronics and reattach the motor arms, and it should be good to fly. And luckily for me, the next week was an event called Flight Fest. If you don't know what Flight Fest is, it's a giant event put on by the guys over at the Flight Test YouTube channel, and it's a whole weekend full of RC planes, camping, and just a whole bunch of fun. So I packed up the whole quadcopter, tons of spare parts, and then hit the road. All right, it's 6.51 and we are off to Flight Fest. Now before we go fly this thing, let's talk about the sponsor of this video, PCBWay. If you guys do projects like me, then PCBWay's services may be really helpful for you. They make custom ordering PCBs really easy with their website. And I even use their services to make the board that controls this quadcopter. Additionally, they do things like 3D printing, CNC machining, and sheet metal fabrication. And then they ship everything right to your door. I've always been impressed with their services, so give them a try using the link down in the description below. All right, now back to the video. Now, once I got to Flight Fest, I met up with Nick Ream, who also makes YouTube videos. Oh my God. <laughs> you should definitely check out his channel because he's actually the one that designed this open source flight controller that the quadcopter uses. I also decided that I needed to decorate the quad a little bit more, so I added these LEDs because, you know, why not? Looks way better with them on than it does with them off. And then I wanted to let Nick fly it just to see what he thought. Here we go. Oh, like a pro. It is heavy. <laughs> How's that throttle response? It's so heavy. <laughs> but it's flying. That's so cool. It feels like I'm flying a semi truck. That, that's about what it like is. Not, not in a bad way, like a good semi truck. Nick is right, this thing is definitely very heavy and slow, but it does fly, and you know, that's why I made it. <laughs> Throughout the weekend, we flew the quad a few more times and only had a couple minor crashes. Uh, I think I only cracked like one piece, which was an arm. Interestingly enough, this was actually an arm printed in ASA, which I think has lower layer adhesion, so it just cracked along the layer line. So luckily I had brought extra PLA arms, and I just swapped that in and we were good to go. Switch over and They're doing 3D planes, get out there. I think we need to, I think we need to get a bigger printer. <laughs> all in all, Flight Fest was an awesome experience and got to see some crazy RC stuff like their combat that they have every year where there's just hundreds of planes in the sky all at once. And then just two weeks later, I brought the quad to San Francisco for open sauce. I had it on display as an exhibit and I got to meet and talk to a lot of you guys, which was a really awesome experience. So after like a month of traveling, we can actually get back to what I started doing with this, which is trying to fly it like an FPV quad. 
So I took it out to a field nearby and got everything ready to go. All right, so today we're gonna use these giant six cell batteries. Um, it's still probably not gonna fly for very long uh, because this thing is so heavy, but it should at least fly. All right, so I have these FPV goggles, but I actually don't trust myself enough to fly this thing without you know knowing where it is. So I'm just gonna have it pulled up on a laptop and we'll go from there. I first flew a short test flight just to see how easy it was to control using the FPV feed. Still flies well. Unfortunately, this thing is actually pretty scary to fly using only the FPV video. You end up with a great sense of the quad's orientation, but not necessarily its location relative to you. And with a quad this big, that can be really dangerous. It's also worth mentioning the onboard video you see here is from a GoPro. The real FPV video looks like this. So that also makes things a little bit harder. Kind of likes to yaw now. I think one of the motors is potentially going bad. All right, let's put it down. <laughs> a little bit of a tough landing, but we should be good. Um, so I think now it's time to go for the big obstacle. All right, we should be good to go. New batteries swapped in, um, drones over there. So we're just gonna take off and go for it. So we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Technically, we did go through it. So there was certainly some damage. You can literally see where the, the props like cut through the foam. So, but the quad looks like it's in one piece. Definitely a little bit of a hard landing. I think we did break, we broke one prop loose up here. So looks like it's not gonna fly again today, but maybe there's some hope of it flying again. We'll see. If we go back and look at the footage, we can actually see that the prop holder broke when the quad hit the ground rather than when it hit the foam. This means it technically made it through with no damage. At this point though, I feel like I've done everything I can with this quadcopter and it's still just humongous and heavy and terrifying. Editing Michael here. I've been working on the video, was done, went to go make a thumbnail, and then there was an accident. Ladies and gentlemen, there's been an accident. So I was trying to drill a hole in the bottom of this thing so I can mount it on a tripod and take some pictures for the thumbnail. I forgot there's a battery inside. So I drilled right into the battery, which promptly caught on fire and pretty much cooked everything inside. I tried spraying with a fire extinguisher, but obviously that didn't work. Luckily, I think the motors are still good. Oh no, I got stuff in my Crocs. Not the Crocs. Here's the damage from that test flight. Looks pretty small now compared to the damage from the fire. <laughs> I'm an idiot, what a dumb mistake. Damn, that sucks. Luckily it looks like the GoPro made it out mostly unscathed, but the rest of the electronics don't look too good. Yes, obviously this really sucks. I was sort of done with this project, but this is really not how I wanted to see it go. I wanted to include this in the video though, because this type of stuff does happen and it's important to keep safety in mind. Unlike I did, I guess. Anyway, that's all for this one. So I'll see you next time. <laughs>